Hello heroes, it's Dr. Zano and Justice Zano for 15 minute fuel. We're just in 15 minutes a day. Well, for your mind, your body, and, and your future. future. Alright, so we're actually in the superhero room. Let me show let me show you this. Alright, is this doing it? Watch this. Yeah, so you got Iron Man coming to the wall, I got all the first place karate. Iron Man, Captain America, there's been an Avenger fight in here. And then you got all the DC comics in there. And then what we like what we've been doing recently is all this right here. These are all the vintage I've, I've already had them for like a five couple, Yeah, these like are the all the vintage G.I. Joe's I used to play with. Now, these aren't the ones I used to play with, but these are the ones from the eighties. What? Which I had to rebuy. <laughs> So let me tell you, so um, that's one thing just, you know, it's amazing. Let me do this real quick. It was, um, yeah, he just got that one. So, and you know, it's amazing it how, you know, 30, was it 30? In the 80s, you have G.I. Joe and I, you know, Justice is still playing with the same stuff. But um, I remember when we, when, when we sold our house in New York to move to Florida, when my parents, you know, were downstairs, we had basements. And I remember all the G.I. Joes, all this stuff here that I used to have, like I remember these two old ladies, they uh, they came in the house and did a house sale. So that's, I don't know if you guys ever been to a house sale. Well, that's where these two older ladies, they went and they just put prices on anything in the house. So you didn't have to take anything out of your house or there was, it wasn't a garage sale. It was like they just put stickers on everything. So people would go through your house and they would buy it. And my mom let those ladies sell all my GI Joes for like a hundred bucks. And now I'm spending like- So this one? 10x right. that to get these right. back. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so the reason why we're in the superhero room is today we're going to talk about uh, maximizing your superpowers and superheroes, right? So, yeah. you know, we again as kids, you know, they like superheroes. You like the GI Joes because they had the they're, they all have heroic things. And the cool thing is each the good the cool thing with GI Joe is they make them better. They yes, heroes. they made them better back in the eighties, and then each character is very well developed. And we talk about like our favorite characters or our favorite people in the movies or favorite athletes or favorite celebrities. Like when we like a certain character or a hero, it's, it's the character traits that they have are really the character traits we have. That's why we relate to them. We relate to what the mirroring effect that we see in others. So that's a great way. When someone, when I ask someone, what's your gifts, what's your talents, what's your values? And someone says, well, I don't know. Well, you do know. I mean, you, you feel you don't know because you've been living out, out somebody else's values for your whole life. You've been doing with mom and dad and sisters and brothers. Why don't you be like your sister? Look how good she does that. Like, you know, all these things we've been told, but we never really find out what, what was really inside us the whole time. So that's why a great exercise is to say, well, what are my favorite heroes and act, you know, and, and books or look back at the things you were a fan of. And then you'll be able to, when you really look deep into it, you'll see those characteristics that you admired, that they're your characteristics that are, are somewhat hibernating inside. But this is, it's all about self-awareness and finding yourself. So the reason why I adjust this on is because we're just playing with the G.I. Joes today. And then tomorrow we're going to... Um, Vegas, Las Vegas. Yeah, so Nevada. Justice is going to his third championship in Vegas. Very proud of him. And he's, this year he's going as a black belt. Yeah. So you went as a green stripe the first year. Green double stripe, then red double stripe. And, black. and now black belt this year. So what age group are you going with? Um, are there 10-year-old black belts? Uh, well, they, it's, if they don't, if there's no 10-year-old black belts, then they'll just put me up with the next level. Nice. Or, or like put other, it's complicated really. Um, So I'll be in the age <laughs> of uh, uh, 10. Uh, not I think nine, ten, and eleven, or ten, eleven, twelve. It depends how many black belts there are. So you're gonna be doing you're gonna be in, in all four um, traditional forms. Yeah, tradi traditional hand form, um, open weapon form, and um, grappling and sparring. Nice. For fighting. So what uh, what do you think you've done that maybe some of the other kids may have not done going to competition? What gives you the edge? Um. Well, last year, the year, the year before that, a lot of kids had like wooden bows that they they there was like they were not light at all, so like they didn't and, and they didn't do it like fast enough. Um, so speed is a yeah, is speed is you... good. Speed and intensity, I would say, is like in a in a skill or is probably like the top two. Like so, like 
how how sharp it is and all that. Yeah, so so that's that's one of your the your, your secret weapons. What else? What will put? What do, you, what do you feel that you have done that will put you over the top? Practicing more and learning new things, probably. Yeah. So hours hours of yeah. prep. It all pays off, right? Yeah. Um, how, now you said intensity. So where's the intensity come from? It that 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 provides most to like like uh, forms. Like um, you wanna you wanna and and you wanna have good intensity when you're. Uh, like grappling or fighting because so but where's it like, come from i'm saying like so what like if someone um, says like how like how would i get intensity so i mean is it's like how does that happen what what creates intensity um some it's something like in inside you so it really can't be explained or at least i can't explain it but um but you just have to find it really like and you have to pra and it takes practice too you can't just all of a sudden find it i mean you can find it but it's gonna be a little you have to add on to it though. so would you, you say during it. your practice that allowed you to find it and then when you find it you you just know how to access it so the yeah. practice the, the practice is the journey that allows you to build the confidence and get the and, and access it to where you could turn the switch on yeah pretty much. nice man so that's so that's uh if you watch the hero keynote that's when I talk about, you know, when I did the story about justice, about justice is very similar to the, 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 the roar of the lion, you know. So, you know, a lion, you know, a baby cub lion doesn't roar because it, it, hasn't, rem it hasn't remembered or realized what and who it is. Like Serpentor. <laughs> he needed to get, he needed to yeah. look at stuff to get his full DNA. Yeah, so... What happens, that baby cub one day realizes over experience, and I'm sure there's different times for different cubs, but it gets to the point where it realizes, well, wait a second, I'm not a cat. You know, I'm a lion. I'm, a lion. I'm not just a cat. I'm a lion. I'm like the king of the jungle. And there has to be a, come a time where it gets to that point instinctively or whatever that is, and then it roars like a lion. And the roar of a lion is, like I said, it actually paralyzes. I remember... I was watching a, a, it was like something on TV when this lady said uh, she was in a, in a, you know, in a zoo and the lion even, but here's the thing, even though the lion was behind a, a, a cage gate, like you were totally safe, but the lion like rushed the gate and roared and she literally said, like, you, you ever get scared, like you almost get in a car accident and you, and you feel your adrenaline rush and it feels like pins and needles and electricity through your body like when you get really scared she's like she got so scared it felt like her whole body got electric like electrical shock you know when your adrenaline releases and she's like she was paralyzed and it just shows you so the roar of the lion sends it's a it's not a noise it's a it's a it's a i am it's it's a like you said it's a something found it's something expressed it's it's uh you can't fake it yeah right it's 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 something that's developed, but there's a level of pride and confidence to embrace it. And so that's really where that, that hero mindset comes from. And then the superpowers, like, is the skills, you know, so you develop the skills. We all have skills. We develop those skills. And the more skills you have, logarithmically produces more value. So whether it be the type of bow he has or his speed or the extra price, so the different skills adds the value so a friend of mine you know he speaks two other languages and is it, uh, Roberto? yeah yeah well roberto speaks three he speaks english oh. well english is his second language portuguese is his first and then he learns spanish and so now he's able to do digital programs not in english but in two other languages so like that the the two extra skills you know, that they say, who has the skill has the power, and whoever has the power has the skill. So that's where developing your skills, always well, either developing your skills or learning new skills, you never go wrong. Like, you can never go wrong investing in that. Like, name a skill. So, well, I mean, it could be cooking. Well, how is that going to bring more value? Well, you're a lot more enriched person hanging around. Like, I have a patient. They know how to salsa dance. They know how to, he's 60-something. He's, uh, no, no, no. The patient, he's sixty something. He knows how to dance. He does water skiing, jet skiing, uh, the, and you know they have Bruce? these. Yeah, Bruce, very good. And uh, he's got all these great skills. He said whenever he said water skiing, I was like, jet yeah, skiing. yeah. I mean, yeah. He's a because he's an enriched person. So the thing is, like, when you have these additional skills or max maximizing your superpowers, so maximizing the gifts and qualities you had, developing new skills. 
it, it, it adds to the enrichment of life. It adds to more experiences. And life is a series of experiences back to back. And you want to squeeze those experiences as close together as possible. And so that's why, you know, we're bringing justice. So we're going to a cool experience. You know, you did seven and a half years of karate. Yeah. Black belt and doing this. So we get to go to Vegas. So that's a cool experience. We'll probably meet Chuck. Again. We call him Chuck. Mr. Norris or Sun is it Sensei Norris? How do you go? No, just Mr. Norris. They call him Mr. Norris. So, so when we go to Vegas, remember Chuck Norris is not Chuck Norris. Like they'll even say like this is their sen sensei. Like so, like he has a different, like he's a different respect when he's there, uh, because you know he's just not Chuck Norris the actor. He's actually the the head dude. So. Yeah massive respect on that guy so we just want to fill you guys in so we'll probably go live from vegas a couple of days i'll try to get as much as your stuff on there yeah. as possible but you know just and here's the thing like if you guys have any gi joes in the attic or something contact me we'll be willing to buy your gi joes because we're collecting gi joes so or or sell them on ebay you'll make it, it depends on like um and you have to like be honest about the description like it depends how good it is and like and like in um how how much it is and how big it is and how well it was taken care of so like so like this one we bought with with it only came with one guy thrasher this was fifty five dollars without these three guys but it came with a uh, thrasher so um but it was it was in very good shape and it looked very nice and the paint was all nice so you can make a good um you can make a lot of money for it. Like this was uh, fifty dollars. This entire set without all the guys or any of that because I added it. But um, you can sell a little thing for like um, a lot. So any final words before you go to Vegas, dude? Um, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'm excited. Yeah. I'm going to take home some trophies. Ooh, he's going to bring home some hardware. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll be there. We'll see you guys from Vegas. Thanks so much. A couple things. Uh, check out, uh, we had We Are Heroes episode four, I, I believe. I re-ran today. That was a good one. That's when we, um, that's when it was like that, that moment of it's like, listen, we're willing to go all in. That's when you make the leap. We need to do one of these about the leap. I think the leap is the toughest thing I'm dealing with now. It's like, see, when you have the leap, the leap requires two things. You got to leap. It takes action, but it's a lot easier to leap when you're not holding on to something else. So, you know, you always heard you don't want to burn bridges, but sometimes to leap, you need to close the chapter of the previous. You need to close the last book or close the previous chapter to make that leap. But sometimes when we're still holding on, it's tough to make the leap, right? It's like me. It's like be, me being tied to a rock and trying to make a leap. I, I mean, It'll pull you back. So I think the leap is the toughest thing when you're going for that big thing in your heart because there's it's the uncertainty. But anyways, that's another one. So guys, have a blessed uh, night. We'll see you tomorrow. Right, Jay? We will. Take care, guys. Bye.